Hey everybody, Karen here. Welcome back to Unpinned Creative. Uh, we are working in the Defe Marimba album today and I am going to be fixing up page three or day three, which was the penguin page. Now this was my least popular <laughs> page for some reason and it is pretty plain the prompts were journaling card and bright color and I really did nothing with the background um, just made a fairly simple journaling card let's get the journal out of the way so I'm gonna see if I can jazz it up a bit and make it a bit more exciting today um, I'll just pop the paper clip to the side for now and the illustration and this was the card that I had made so it has a piece of vellum so you can journal here and you can also journal on top if you want to and then it had a fabric flip with a journaling space here and then journaling space on the back so you can journal right over top of this fabric because I've put some gesso on it um, but we're going to make it a bit more exciting today. And then the background was very boring. Nothing exciting going on here at all. So we'll see what we can do with that. But before I get started, I had a question from Marlene about the texture paste I use, um, which is the homemade texture paste. And she was after the recipe. So Marlene, the recipe that I use is a cup of baby powder. I just use the Johnson's baby powder because that's what they had at the supermarket. Um, but you will get that baby powder smell um, and it is quite strong. So uh, if you can find unscented stuff, use unscented stuff or you can just use cornstarch. So it's a cup of um, starch based baby powder or cornstarch half a cup of gesso and half a cup of Mod Podge and it will seem really thick but you just need to keep stirring it and it comes right and it's um, really lovely to use. Now I got the recipe from Laurie Marie Jenkins um, if you want to if you just search YouTube for Laurie Marie Jenkins um, texture paste recipe it should come up and I'll put it in the description for you as well. So that is that and now the first thing I'm going to do with this page is I'm going to, um, I didn't glue down the edges of this doily. So I'm just going to lift those up out of the way and I'm going to gesso the rest of the background. And this is just normal gesso. Um, it's a fairly cheap one. So quite thin. Um, which I prefer. I, like to, like, I don't like it to be too... Um, Thick. It doesn't have to cover up the entire background. I just want a white layer over the top. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to stick that doily down into it. Into the gesso. Like so. Get rid of my fingerprints. Nothing too tricky so far. <laughs> Alrighty. Then I'm going to leave that gesso to dry. And while that is drying, I'm going to work on this journaling card. So I'll pop that up out of the way. Pop that out of the way. Okay, journaling card. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to bring this flip over and have it coming in front now because I love this fabric so much. Um, and that makes more sense actually now that I'm thinking about it. And for this illustration, it has on the back about penguins. So I wanted to keep that and I'm going to, but I'm going to actually attach this to this piece of fabric um, with, before I do that actually, I'm going to ink that side. I 
I don't remember what colour ink I used on the front, so I'm just using Stormy Sky on the back. Okay, that's a bit better. And then I'm going to use some Washi, I think, down the side. Just for a bit of fun. And that makes all the difference. It makes it, you know, a bit more finished. <laughs> and I think I'm going to add a strip of this washi as well. So most of my washies I have picked up second hand um, and they've been partly used and stuff so I can't tell you where they've come from, I'm sorry. Alright, I'm happy with the back of that now. Being more finished. I think I was so um, flustered about Defer Marimba and because I left it to the last minute, um... to actually join up and stuff I just rushed through the first few pages and didn't finish them off properly and didn't really give them much thought so I'm actually really enjoying this process of going back and completing them properly so thank you for bearing with me while I <laughs> while I redo all these <laughs> okay so I'm going to join um, these two bits here and I'm just going to use a strip it's just an off cut from um, something a page a journaling page or something I'm going to fold it in half lengthways I'm just deciding if I want it on the outside or the inside Yeah, I think I'll put it on the inside. So you could, of course, of course use washi for this as well. Um, or a piece of fabric, or a piece of ribbon, or a piece of lace, or just scrap paper. Cool, very happy with that. Much more finished. I'm just going to leave this piece of fabric plain as it is because I love it so much I want to be able to see it exactly as it was without um, embellishing it because on this side I've covered it in gesso and it's still cute and I can still see it but um, I love that blue, blue colour. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to chop these threads off because they're annoying me. Right, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to jazz up these penguins. some monocles and some hats so I have here some tiny little wire pieces of wire that I have made little tiny circles out of I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can and they are going to become monocles for my penguins up here 
So each of these penguins is going to have a monocle. And I've done some copper coloured ones and I had a silver one that I have now lost. <laughs> oh, there it is. So I'll quickly show you how I made those. Okay, so this wire is just the wire from um, some wired ribbon. So you know at Christmas time you can get wired ribbon for making cool puffy bows and things. So I um, use that ribbon sometimes but take the wires out. So this is that wire. It's very thin and comes in very handy for things like this. So all I did was I used a pair of tweezers but you could also use pliers and I clipped the end between the tweezers and then wound the wire around maybe three or four times and then slid the ring off the end chopped it with my scissors because it's thin enough to chop with scissors like that and then you have a little monocle for a penguin and I just pushed in the ends with my tweezers the ends of the wire and you can kind of shape it into a more of a circular shape if you want to. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I'm just going to make one more of those. The other thing you can do if you don't have wide ribbon is twist ties. The inside of twist ties, you know, um, I guess people, you can still get them, um, that you'd put around open packets of food or something like that. Uh, I don't know if that's what they called everywhere in the world, but we call them twist ties. So they're usually paper or plastic and they have a thin wire in the middle and you can wrap them around your chip packet or your bread bag or whatever. Um, so you can pull the paper or the plastic off those, that, and the wire inside is also nice and thin like this and comes in very handy for crafting. <laughs> All right, so I have three silver or um, kind of pewter even coloured monocles and three copper coloured ones, no, four copper coloured ones. And all of that I'm going to use to stick those down. Actually, before I do, I want to just squish them down with my pencil. So I'm just going to squish them down with the end of my pencil to try and flatten them out a bit. Make sure they're nice and flat. And then what I think I'll use to glue them on is, I have some, it's called Deco Art Paper Effects. I think it's like stickles, maybe? Um, it's just that glossy 3D stuff. And I'm going to make a little circle over the penguin's eye with this. And then drop a monocle on. And hopefully that will hold it. We will find out. Put a bit match on this one. Righty.
just going to clean up around the edges of that because once that stuff is dry it should go clear hopefully although it's pretty old now but we'll <laughs> cross our fingers and then it'll look like it's a glass monocle over the penguin's eyes uh, and then this tiny little one that I have left, I'm going to pop over this baby penguin down here because what I want it to look like is that this baby penguin is joining the rebels up here and his family are not very happy about it. That's the story I've created in my head anyway. So I've glued that on top of the vellum so you'll be able to lift it off and see the baby penguin without the monocle. Okay, so we have penguins with monocles and a baby penguin who's been rebellious. And now, now they need some hats. So I have just cut out some top hats and some little bowler hats from black card, just plain black card and I just freehand, freehanded those so um, if you want an idea of how to do that it is easy peasy for a top hat. Well, for both of them, you just draw a rim like that. This is not like, this is just, for this sort of thing, it's just to give the idea of of what you're wanting. You don't have to draw, draw, draw an especially accurate depiction. It's just to give people the idea of what you mean. So you draw the brim and then a tall cylinder with a little lid like so and then for the bowler hat the same thing draw a brim and then you just want a short cylinder with rounded edges and a little divot in the middle There you go. I should have done that on not black. <laughs> so you could see it. And then I just use, when I'm cutting out tiny little miniature stuff like that, use um, tiny little scissors with a very sharp point. Makes it much, much, much easier. So these are um, embroidery scissors, specifically. I stole them out of my sewing kit. <laughs> um, but really handy for cutting tiny little things. So I... Um, recommend getting a pair of those if you're doing lots of little fussy cutting which I do sometimes anyway these guys need some hats I'm not giving the baby penguin a hat because he's just in the um, first stages of becoming a rebellion a rebellious rebel like these the slot up here but these guys are all going to have hats so I just need to glue those on Okay, I'm just going to glue along the brim. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. And hopefully... Hopefully that is enough to hold it on there. There's not much headspace. I mean, you know, for this top hat. There we go.
<laughs> I love it. Right, and then this last top hat is going on this dude on the paper clip. But first of all, he needs some glasses. So I'm not going to give him a monocle, I'm going to give him glasses like spectacles. So I have a piece of silver wire here. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before, which is. make a circle at one end there we go and then do the same at the other end okay so now we have some little I don't even know if you can see them Tiny spectacles. Okay. And I hope you can see, because I can't see. <laughs> the, sc the screen is too close to my face. And even though I have my glasses on, I'm very tired today. And my eyes don't work great when I'm tired. And um, I can't actually see what you can see. So even when I'm looking at the screen of my camera, it's all just blurry. So... <laughs> <laughs> I hope that is more in focus for you and you can see the tiny little spectacles on that penguin because they're very cute okay so I'm going to glue those on the same way with the uh, what's it called paper effects dimensionals I think they're called like oh, I don't know I don't know what this stuff is called that most people use I've had it for so long. I've probably had it for a decade. Might be called Dimensionals. That sounds familiar to me. That name. Put that over his eyeballs. And then drop the glasses down into it. It's not the easiest when you can't see properly. <laughs> Doing such little baby stuff. Little miniature, miniature things. There we go. Right, so he has glasses. And then he needs a top hat. Alrighty, so hopefully his eyeballs will dry clear. If they don't, it's okay because we'll just fix them um, but I'm sure they will it's supposed to dry clear it has every time other time I've used it and same with these ones very cute now I just want to add some dimension to the hats and that's really easy peasy to do um, I'm just going to Grab a paint pen and I'm just going to draw a line across the hat at the top above the brim. Often hats have a, a ribbon there. So I'm just going to do that on each of the top hats. on all the hats actually without knocking their monocles off and so even though it's black on black it should be enough just to create some shadow I am hoping 
so uh, yeah and then the other thing I'm going to do is just grab a silver marker and just go around the edge of the top with that just right on the edge and actually I think I'll go down one side and one side of the brim So hopefully you can see that. Okay. Right. Aren't they cool? <laughs> I love them so much. And this naughty little cheeky baby down here with his monocle. And they all look very not impressed that he is joining the cool kids. <laughs> rebellious teenage penguin alrighty the other thing one last thing that I wanted to do on this is make a little tab at the bottom of this vellum so that it's obvious that you can lift it up and journal under there if you want to um, and I'm just going to use a piece of ribbon so I have this cool blue organza ribbon that has a border on it so I'm just going to take a snippet of that, preferably straight. If I used my fabric scissors instead of my paper scissors, I'd probably have more luck. And then in the middle of that, I'm just going to pop some of this silver ribbon. like so okay okay and then i'm just going to pop some glue on the ends the glue goes right through this ribbon because it's so thin so everything is sticky and then I'm going to pop it on there and fold it in half just like so made a big mess alrighty now I just have to let all of that dry and then that is done so I'll put that aside bring this page back in and figure out what we're doing here I think I'm just gonna grab a stencil I forgot to hit record I'm really sorry <laughs> I'll go over what I just did. I just grabbed a stencil. Um, this is a Dilution stencil, I believe. No, it isn't. It isn't. It is called um, Craft Treat. Uh, I got it off Amazon and it was just a cheap, cheap one. And it has kind of script in amongst the diamonds. So I just used my blending brush, my Not Quite Navy stamp, stamp pad, and... Um, randomly went over the stencil down the bottom here and then again um, up the top just in a few random places and then I used the leftover ink that was on my brush and went right around the edges of the page and that's all I did so a doily which I inked with ink uh, stamp pads I think 
you in the first video of the penguin page you'll see what I actually did white gesso on the background and then navy ink and I think that is a pretty cool background I'm much happier with that <laughs> so if we bring our penguin journaling card back in he is going to sit there and I'll be spectacle penguin so this is none of this is dry yet we've got to let it dry a bit more these ones up the top are getting drier they're almost clear again um, so I actually really love this page now I think it looks really cool <laughs> I love these penguins they are very awesome and so that paper clip will just sit there and hold it all together and I think it's amazing so what did we do today background gesso stenciling with ink and then monocles on the penguins hats on the penguins a little tab down the bottom here and we attached this illustrated card to this fabric flap Put some washi on all easy peasy easy peasy stuff but makes a difference to how finished the page looks and um i think it i think it's lovely i'm very happy with it i especially love the hat and the monocles on the penguins <laughs> might just go around those holes alrighty that is it for today thank you so much for joining me um, sorry it's been a bit haphazard today I will be back the day after tomorrow with another creative healing session so I really hope to see you all there Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.